Hey everybody, Casey Ferris here. I make videos on DaVinci Resolve. Today we're learning how to make a social media pop-up graphic in Fusion that you can reuse, customize, and all of that. Let's jump in. So the first thing we'll do is go to the media pool in the edit page, right click and say new fusion composition. Let's do five seconds. We'll call this social media pop up and hit create. Double click on that in the media pool and that'll bring up our blank fusion composition. First thing that we need to do is make a background just to set the composition size. So let's use background node for that. Just grab that, drag it in here and connect the background to the media out. That will give us a black background. I'll select this and then in the inspector, just take this alpha all the way down. That'll make a clear background because we want this to come in as a graphic over other things. This will just give us a nice starting point for that. All right, so the base of this graphic is going to just be text. So let's grab a text plus, third icon over here in the toolbar, and then down in our nodes, let's take the output and merge it over the background. Now with the text selected, we can start typing. Let's call this at some name. Open Sans Bold is pretty good for something like this, I'd say. And the color, let's make this kind of almost black. So I don't know, something maybe like this. I'll hit OK. Now we have the black text on the clear background, but we want to have a little panel behind this. Now there are a bunch of different ways to make a panel. You can use shape nodes, you can mask a background node, but when it comes to text, the easiest and the most versatile way is if we go over to shading, the fourth tab over here, and here where it says shading elements under select element, let's go to element two and hit enabled. And what each element does is basically add a layer to kind of stylize this text. So you can build up outlines and shadows and different gradients and all this stuff. But what we're gonna do is under properties here, under appearance, this third little icon over, that makes boxes behind each letter. And you can switch it from each letter here where it says level character to level line. And that's gonna make one big box around this line which is looking suspiciously like what we wanna do. I think what we'll do is extend this quite a bit too. So now we have a lot of space on each side. I think that's pretty nice. And also I wanna round the corners a little bit just to actually take the actual edge off. <laughs> and for the color, let's make this almost white. Do white and then just bring this down a little bit. I just think things look a little bit more classy if you don't do it quite black and quite white for stuff like this. Just takes that contrast down a little bit. Looks a little more, looks a little classier, I think. You can make it whatever color you want. So this is looking pretty good. Let's go over to text. Now here's what's cool. Because this is a shading element of our text, I can type whatever I want and this will grow to be bigger or smaller. So this is really great for something like this where you might wanna change this every once in a while. One thing I will do is change the horizontal anchor to left. And now look what happened. I change this, it only grows the right side. That's gonna be really great here in a minute. So let's take this size down a little bit. So it doesn't need to be huge. One thing I've learned is that graphics usually don't need to be very big for them to be totally effective. Cause you know, you wanna make them big enough to read, but on this preview, remember that this screen is a lot smaller than people will normally see it. I mean. I guess on their phone maybe, but if you can read it on this preview, it's probably fine. So I'm gonna do something like this. And one thing we'll do is turn on the title safe just to kind of line things up a little better, keep it off of the edges. It's debatable whether this is still a thing or not, but it's good practice to keep your graphics inside of title safe. To turn on title safe, I'm gonna right click anywhere here on this screen and go to guides, show guides. And that will show me all kinds of guides here. And we'll just make sure that Anything that's going to appear really is inside of this second little line. So it doesn't have to be the background, but whatever's going to be inside of the background should be in that line. So we'll just kind of line it up like that because we are going to put an icon here. Looks good. I'm going to turn off our guides. You can also hit control G to turn those off or on. Now let's keep stylizing this. Let's say I also want this to kind of have a little drop shadow thing. Well, there's a node for that. Down here in the nodes, move our text one up here and let's rename it username underscore txt so we know it's text. And I'll hit shift spacebar and type shadow, S-H-A-D-O-W. And we just want the regular shadow. I'll hit add. And what this node does is take any input and it will make sort of a drop shadow. All we have to do is mess with the offset a little bit and I'll just make something like that. And what's cool is you can change the shadow color too. So I'm gonna change the shadow color to like kind of a bluish thing, be something like that. And because it's generating this shadow from the text, again, if I make this bigger, it's just going to grow the shadow as well. Now we gotta add our little icon. 
And we're gonna do this a little bit of a tricksy way. I'm gonna add this with an SVG, which you can download SVG logos if you just Google them. But let's go all the way up to the top of our interface under Fusion and say import SVG. And here I have an SVG logo for Twitter. I'll hit open. It's gonna ask what width and height to make it. It's not really important for what we're doing. 1920 by 1920 is totally fine. I'll hit okay. And now what it's made is a group down here. And if we hit one on the keyboard, bring this up in our left screen. And guess what? It's one of those little Tweety Bird guys. So what just happened here? If we double click on this group, we can see what it's done is taken this SVG and it's made a mask and it's masked a blue background. And it looks like it also masked something else. Maybe it got confused. I don't know. And merged it. Probably don't even need these, but that's all right. It's brought this graphic in as a mask. Mask. And the cool thing is this shape actually lives inside of Fusion. It's not a PNG or something like that that you have to link to. It's just like you drew this mask yourself. So we can take this Twitter logo and I'll merge it over our merge one. Let's rename these. Let's call this logo MRG. This one will be text merge. And let's scale our Twitter logo. I'll just add a transform shift spacebar XF. Now let's turn our size down, scale this and move it around. And we're going to put this to the left of our text kind of line it up nicely and there's our little logo isn't that cool so there's our little pop-up that's pretty neat all we have to do is animate it you guys ready for a super cool trick check this out normally what you could do is do something like mask each of these elements or fade them on or move them on but let me show you a really neat trick for kind of having this wipe on and still be really easy to customize we're gonna take everything that we've made so far and mask it with itself, which is such a nodes thing to do. But let's make a merge at the end of this. Shift spacebar MRG. And I'm actually gonna make a transform node too. I'll double click in the empty space and hit shift spacebar XF. And we're going to put the transform node into the input of our merge and put everything into that transform node. So what we're doing so far is not really anything. We're just kind of putting everything over itself for now. But if we select this transform and we move the pivot to be like we're on the very left side of our graphics, then if we were to change the size of this, let's just untick use size and aspect and mess with X size. Let's we'll see what happens here. This kind of squishes on the X axis and we can animate that squish. So let's say this takes like half a second or so. I'll make a keyframe on this transform right here under X size. And back at the start of our comp, we'll take this X size and we'll make it zero. So now what we have is this squishing up like that. But here's the tricky part. We can take all of this and use it as a mask for the original comp here. Instead of piping this transform into the green foreground, we're gonna do a couple things. I'll just disconnect that and grab a background node. Let's move this down a little bit. I'll take the background node here and we're going to take the background node into the background of our merge and take our logo merge our original comp and put that into the foreground. So now again, we're putting this over black. Actually, what we could do is take our original background and do this. So we have this clear background going into the merge and then we have everything that we've made going on top of that again. Now, why would we do all this again? We already did this. Well, we can take this transform which is everything getting squozen on that X axis and take the output here and use this as a mask. And now check out what happens here in our comp. This reveals itself just like this because it's using itself as that mask. So now it kind of just animates on like that. And you can select this transform and go to our spline panel up here in the upper right hand corner. Click on that. That'll open this up down here. And if we click on X size and select the last keyframe and hit F on the keyboard, that's going to ease this in. And so now we have this going, boop, just a nice little animation that kind of wipes this graphic on. And the coolest part is that if we make this graphic bigger, like we are definitely going to do, the animation still works because it's all based on how big that text is. So even if this is really small, it still animates on. And that's slick. It's like next level, man. Next level masking tech. Follow it on Twitter. It's probably not a thing. So let's kind of review these nodes just to clear up any confusion. This is a clear background. And what we're doing is putting some text over it. This is text plus, which is just the dark gray text with the almost white background. Then we're putting a blue shadow under it and we're taking our Twitter logo and we're scaling it down and we're merging it over our comp here. Now, for some of you who might be triggered that this blue is not the same as this blue, don't worry. Let's take the shadow and we're just gonna sample our Twitter bird color here. 
That was very close, actually. But I know if I didn't match that, oh, you all on me in the comments. Ugh. So now these blues match. So the Twitter bird goes over everything. And then we're taking all of this. We're putting it in a transform node, which just kind of squishes this like this. And it doesn't matter that it's squishing the text and everything because we never see that. This is just being used as a mat in this merge to reveal our graphic. And then when we're all done, here's what it looks like. Just and all we have to do to animate this on is animate our transform. Call this scale everything underscore XF that we know what it's doing. So how do we package this and kind of use it every day in our various projects and stuff? Here's what you do. Select everything except for your media out here in the Fusion page. Right click on any of the nodes and go up to macro and we'll select create macro. And that brings up this very intimidating macro editor. We'll call this Twitter pop-up. And what this does is let you select the things that you would like to edit later when you make this a template. The only thing that we really want to edit is gonna be our text. So under username underscore text, roll up image. So this like third little section here under text, under style text, that's what we want. I'm gonna click this little checkbox for export and let's do font style, color, blue, alpha, size, tracking. And that's pretty good. Let's go up to file and save as. I'm just gonna throw this on my desktop, Twitter popup dot setting and hit save. So that makes a dot setting file that you can use in your edit. But to make this really pro, we really need to do one more step. I'm gonna go to my explorer. Here where it says Twitter popup dot setting. I'm gonna do a couple real silly things here. We're gonna make a dot drfx file. And pretty much what you do is you make a folder called edit. And then inside of that, you have one called titles and you put whatever you want inside of that little titles folder. Then you take the edit folder, right click and create a zip with some kind of zip archiver. I use seven zip, just say add to archive and call it whatever you want. Twitter popup dot zip, but instead of dot zip, type drfx. Twitter popup dot drfx, and I'll hit OK. And then it magically makes this little drfx file. And at this point in Resolve Land, this is still a little buggy. So what I like to do is make a duplicate of this. I'll hit Control C and Control V. Just make a copy here, because sometimes you try and install this, and it just it just deletes it just deletes it. Let's see if that happens. I'll take this drfx and drag it into my nodes here in fusion it's going to ask if i want to install twitter pop-up i'll hit install and it'll say no you, you can't you can't man you just can't and i'll go great okay so we restart resolve let's try this again do you want to install your twitter pop-up and i said install and then it will do nothing and that means that it worked <laughs> you should be able to go over to your effects library in fusion under templates under edit under titles and see Twitter pop up. Yay. And after you restart resolve, it should be in your effects library over here in the edit page under titles down here, Twitter pop up. Then you can just drag that into your edit and select this and adjust the names and everything. Now it's a thing. Isn't that awesome? So yeah, now you can make your own little pop-up things, easy to customize and all of that stuff. You know what's even better than doing something that's, you know, sort of easy is not having to do it at all. So check this out. If you guys haven't heard of this guy, his name's Patrick and he does resolve videos as well. You should all go and subscribe to him. If you like my videos, you will certainly like his videos, but he has a video here called my biggest DaVinci resolve preset yet 101 social media promo. Today I'm showing off and giving away to all of you this. It's a preset. It looks just like the other ones, but instead of five different options, instead of eight here in the drop down for preset, you have a hundred different options for different websites, social media companies, a whole sorts of things, even some general options that you can promote. 100. He made a preset that's kind of like this, but it has a hundred different icons in it. So if you like this kind of style, you can get his preset and do basically any social media thing you want. This guy's a genius. I know he's gonna do some great things. So go download his preset, sub to his channel, the link to the preset is down in the description of his video. I'll also put it down here below my video. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. And if you stayed all the way to the end, why don't you hit the like? You, then you can let me know that you did and you do.